What's going on guys? So it is an interesting day today. I'm inside the back of my new 10 foot cargo trailer. Got some goodies in here, courtesy of my sponsors over at eTrailer. Anytime we get a new trailer, they get all excited and said, hey, you know what? That's kind of our thing. We fix up trailers. So they provided me some really, really cool products here. Um, not the tires. The tires I actually had to buy on Amazon. These are the Trans Eagle G-rated 15-inch tires, 225-75 R15. Now let's talk about these tires for a little bit before we dive into what else is here. So I already made a video talking about the specs on these tires. G load range, 14 ply rating. These are equivalent to like the Saloon tires you would put on a fifth wheel, but they're designed for a 15 inch wheel, which brings us to these wheels. So these are the wheels that eTrailer provided. They probably look familiar because they're the exact same design as the wheels that we put on the cargo trailer that we built before, my 20 foot cargo trailer. So this is my 10 foot cargo trailer. Now the big difference here is that this is a five lug pattern versus a six lug pattern that I had on the cargo trailer. These wheels are rated up to 2,200 pounds worth of cargo capacity per wheel or load capacity. The other ones were 2,800 pounds per wheel. Now, a lot of people are gonna ask, well, can you even mount these tires on these wheels because of the significant difference in payload capacity versus the tire and wheel? So the tires are rated up to like 4,000 something pounds. The wheels are rated up to 2,200 pounds each. So what we're gonna do, because this is such a far more robust tire than what's on the trailer, we're gonna fill these things up to 80 PSI whenever we mount them on the wheels, which the wheels are rated for 80 PSI max. So we'll be maxing out the wheels and we'll be at the very low end of the tire. But if you look at the load rating on these tires when you're at 80 PSI, you're at about 2,800 pounds and we're not gonna be overloading the wheel at that point. So we'll be in good shape just to keep it there. We definitely don't wanna to go too much higher in terms of PSI because we don't want to go beyond what the wheel is physically capable of handling from a pressure perspective. But these will be assembled probably tomorrow and then I'll get them thrown on the trailer. But behind it, you see a small piece of E-Track here. This is a five foot section. And then behind that, this is an eight foot section of E-Track. So I have four eight foot sections and one five foot. The five foot section, you probably figured is gonna go right here between the door and the back ramp. And I'm gonna put two on the wall here and then two on the floor right here. So it'll definitely give me the mounting locations I need for E-Track. But one of the first things I wanna do is something a little bit different. I actually wanna take this diamond plate rubber mat material and I wanna attach it to this back ramp door because it's kind of unprotected, right? And there's several different ways to do this. Whenever you look at a toy hauler, this is typically the type of material they'll have on the back ramp door. But this is something I just wanna to do to protect the door a little bit more against you know the elements and things damaging it, driving over it and such. Now, this material right here was actually provided for an entirely different project. If you guys remember, we reconditioned, I mean completely restored this school trailer that was used to haul around band equipment for the Kingsville, Texas High School Marching Band. Well, when we got this stuff in, we found out that it was the wrong size. So they just told us to keep it and we actually went out and purchased enough from another company to do the entire inside and the ramp of the van that we, we installed it on. So this ended up being scrap and extra and I still had it. So definitely still want to give a shout out to LCI for providing this for that job, even though we ended up having to go out and buy an extra roll of it just so we could finish that project. But this is going to be enough for us to at least do the ramp here and I have ordered more of this on Amazon. So they sell this product on Amazon in a much larger roll. And the one that I ordered is 15 feet long by eight feet wide. So this trailer inside width is about six foot three inches roughly. And the length is a little over 11 feet. So we're gonna have plenty to do the interior floor of this trailer whenever the new stuff arrives. But what I'm gonna do today is try to mount this onto that and then when we get the new flooring material in for this section i'll make a video on that so you can see what it's all about but yeah this shouldn't be too difficult i know typically they use like a roll-on adhesive but we're going to use a spray-on adhesive and i'm also going to secure it around the edge here with this aluminum half inch channel that i purchased from lowe's so hopefully it'll all work out the way i'm hoping it will but we're definitely going to give it a shot so let's go ahead and get this drug out and adhere to this with the spray adhesive first and then come back around behind it with this channel to secure it in place. 
Okay, so I'm breaking out the nifty tripod for this project. First thing I need to do is pull the rug out or pull the rubber mat out and make sure that it covers the entire area that I'm trying to protect, which is going to be the ramp and the gate right here, or at least the flip down portion of the gate right here. So let's get it pulled out and see what it looks like. Well, that is a relief. So it covers the ramp just about perfectly. I mean, if you were gonna order it for this application, this is probably the exact amount you'd wanna order. So the next thing I'm gonna do is kind of align it, make sure it's exactly where I want it. Um, I might start at one end and kind of roll it out, but the goal here is that I wanna get one side started and then I can come back up and start doing the rest. And you guys will kind of see when I get to that part. And if you're wondering what spray adhesive I'm using, it's the 3M High Strength 90 contact adhesive. This, I believe, is the strongest over-the-counter stuff they sell. Works really well, and it is very precise. So whenever you spray this down, it makes a really nice, clean line, and it kind of spreads out real wide, so you can kind of fan it over the area you want and get it to uh, cover what you want and not get on the stuff you don't want. So, works real well. And the key with this spray adhesive and probably just about any other spray adhesive on the market is that you apply it on both sides. So you apply it on the part you're gonna be securing it to and you also apply it on the material itself. Give it about 30 or 40 seconds and then adhere them together and it's a bond that's pretty hard to break to be honest. Okay, so now comes kind of the easy and hard part. I've rolled it up. I have the first two feet of it adhered already and I'm just gonna spray it and roll it out as I you know, do more and more of the gate coming back this way. So hopefully it works out. Okay, so we're right here at the end. I had to notch out the mat on each side so I could get it around the little hinges right here that hold the cables in place. So I'm gonna to continue to spray it down and then I'll trim it up a little bit. Okay, so now I just need to trim this piece off, do the flip out section and then trim off the side and put the aluminum channel around. Okay, so we have the rubber mat adhered. I picked up this hinge right here, screwed it back down on top. Now I'm just gonna install this half inch aluminum angle iron channel into this groove right here. Cut it right there, feed it across the top, similar to what you see right there. Probably should have used three quarter inch, but this looks like it's gonna work out just fine. So let me get to uh, getting this in place and screwing it down.
Well, I gotta admit, it looks good. It's adhered down with the highest strength 3M adhesive, at least I can find. Yep, that looks pretty good. Got the aluminum angle iron all the way around it. I think it is gonna work out perfectly. So I'm waiting for a much larger roll of that to come in so I can finish off the inside of the trailer. I'm also gonna go pick up some paint and I'm gonna paint the inside of the trailer. What color do you all think I should paint the inside of the trailer? Put a comment below. Should I do it in white? My wife thinks I should do it in kind of like a off-white or a gray. But what do you guys think? So I'm gonna paint the inside walls. I'm gonna put this stuff down right here. And something you always wanna consider whenever you're laying flooring down in a trailer, these seams, if these aren't tongue and groove in terms of how they attach, then you could have an air gap between these. And if you lay a flooring down, the wind from the road driving over it can get through those panels and start making your floor lift up. So you wanna make sure that if you lay this stuff down over this type of floor, it's either tongue and groove or you've put some type of a, a tape over these seams just so it doesn't you know, cause a draft or even silicone or something over those seams just so wind doesn't come up and start delaminating your floor off of the bottom of your trailer. But yeah, it's a cool little project. I really like this trailer, to be honest. I mean, it's a tiny little 10-foot cargo trailer, but man, it's just had so many really, really good uses. And it's like having a really huge truck bed that's super tall that you can pretty much load anything you might need to load into it whenever you're making quick trips to you know, Lowe's or Home Depot or the hardware store, or you gotta pick up a tractor, a small one, like a lawn tractor where you just need a place to put something for a little while. Plus, whenever we you know, get all the mountain bikes out, this is just a great place to put them. And once I have all the e-track and everything in place, and once this is finished completely, I think it's gonna be really awesome. I'm considering whether I wanna put a small little table or shelf up here. I have a battery that's gonna go on it, and that's gonna be a special project, so you're definitely gonna to wanna to hang tight for that one. But this trailer is definitely a work in progress. I still wanna maintain it as a cargo trailer, though. So I don't wanna do anything to it that takes away from its ability to be used as a cargo trailer if I need to go pick something up. And uh, you know, it just gives you a ton of use out of something like this. Truck bed's nice, but a truck bed's only a little over 20 inches tall and it's not completely sealed. This on the other hand, gives me the ability to really move stuff around in a much more protected way and, uh, and have plenty of room for everything I need. Anyways guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. I know it wasn't crazy exciting, but this was actually a pretty cool project. And if it's one you wanna do yourself, I'll put a link to the material that I bought on Amazon, since I don't think you can buy this stuff directly from LCI. It was uh, donated to the project that we were doing on the trailer. And again, we had to end up going out and buying a much larger piece of it because I think the size is specifically made for ramps or something super small. So I have that piece right there. That piece is gonna go right there. I have more than enough to do probably both sides and I'll likely do both sides just to have some protection to the bottom of that whenever it's laying on the ground. Anyways guys, I sure hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna load the trailer back up and I will be back to talk to you again really soon. If you haven't had a chance, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again soon.